If your hi-fi or radio has a connection for a DAB aerial, you could install one like this outdoors or in a loft. These sorts of aerials are useful when you want to improve DAB reception. They also mean you don't need a wire antenna hanging up behind your hi-fi system or receiver. In this video we'll install this aerial in a loft and connect it up to a DAB micro hi-fi system. Before installing an aerial check that you can plug in an external aerial on your device. There should be a connector like this. Some radios have a removable telescopic aerial, but many new, even high-end DAB radios don't have this option anymore. With aerials for TV and radio it's best to install them outdoors and high up, but a loft installation can work as well. Before getting started I'm just checking the signal strength on the hi-fi. Reception of some national stations and the local stations is good, but reception of stations like Absolute Radio and BBC Radio 6 Music is poor. Hopefully when the new aerial is connected up this will be improved. This is the aerial that I'm going to install in the loft today. Uh, it's made by Blake UK. They're a UK company that's been making aerials for many years now, uh, but there are other brands available. It's an omnidirectional aerial, which means that when it's installed, it should pick up stations from all directions. Uh, so here I'm hoping to get stations from Teesside and Tyne and Weir, as well as the national DAB stations. So in this location, the omnidirectional aerial makes the most sense. If you live in an area with poor coverage, or maybe somewhere like the coast, a directional aerial uh, which points in a direction for a transmitter, that could be a better option and we'll be taking a look at those in a different video. The aerial comes in the box like this, so there's a little bit of assembly to do. I've just got a flat bladed screwdriver uh, and an adjustable spanner to help with that. Uh, if you're looking at your aerial, maybe if you've already bought one and you don't see this rain cover here, uh, this is where the cable comes in and connects up. If you don't have that and instead you see uh, an F connector like on this lab gear aerial, uh, that's absolutely fine. It's just a different way of connecting up the aerial. I've used this particular aerial for a couple of years with no problems at all. So if you don't see the type we're going to be using today, we will cover this a bit later in the video uh, and that will be absolutely fine. Now we can take a look at the assembly of the aerial. So this can be a little bit fiddly, but what we want to do is on the back uh, undo two wing nuts so that we can swing the boom around uh, ready for it to go on the mount. So to do that, I'm just going to undo these, loosen them off. Uh, I should mention that if you don't fancy doing this yourself, you can speak to a TV aerial installer uh, who'll be able to install one of these aerials. It's worth just uh, calling up a few different companies or get a recommendation uh, or go on the uh, Get Me Viewing website, which is quite good. I'll put a link in the description below to that, uh, which is run by the uh, CAI. And uh, they'll be able to give you a price for installing an aerial uh, like this. So what we can do is just swing this boom around and we want to get this, uh, this bolt here at the bottom uh, to come through uh, into this hole here. There we go. So now what we want to do is uh, put on the, the wing nuts and do those up. Uh, there is a little metal washer uh, underneath each wing nut, so do make sure you've got that. If you don't see it, it might be underneath the boom. You might just need to undo that and, and bring that out. So now we can just do these wing nuts up. So do make sure that these are all nice and tight and secure. And uh, if you need to get that screwdriver just to uh, hold down the, uh, the screw just to make sure you can get a, a nice tight uh, fit. And you can do that. That's all right. We will double check all the connections uh, and the, uh, everything once it's on the pole. So what we can do now we have the aerial put together is uh, start taking a look at the cable. This is WF100 cable from Webro. It's a good quality cable. It's used for TV and satellite installations as well. If you want to find out more about it, you can go onto the Webro website when they have some details on there.
Uh, it's not the cheapest cable, uh, but you can buy it in specific lengths uh, online, or if you have a local aerial shop, you could pop in and see if they can do a, a cut for you, uh, maybe by the meter, and you can just get what you need. You don't have to use this cable if you already have some or it's not available where you are. Uh, just look out for satellite cable. Uh, that's generally a good indication of a, you know, a cable that's going to be a suitable quality. Uh, this is some that I've used before and I think it's been okay. It has the foil tape in there. Um, but the thing to do is to avoid the very cheap cable that's just marked coax or something like that or digital cable. Um, you want really to know a bit more about it than that. I've removed the rain cover from the aerial so we can see the terminal and the clamp on the aerial itself to connect the cable up to. I'm going to put the aerial to one side for a minute whilst we do that. Uh, something important to remember with the cable is that we need to put it through the rain seal first. If we forget to do that we'll have to disconnect it all and do it again. So all I'm going to do is just push the cable through the hole and uh, it doesn't need to be through very much, it's just enough so that we can uh, strip the cable back and uh, get it connected up to the aerial. There we go, that should be enough. So looking at the cable itself, there are some details on the instructions of what to do with stripping back some of this insulation and fitting the cable. Uh, you can get specialist tools to do this, uh, I just like to use a Stanley knife and I'm just going to cut into the insulation carefully and uh, go all the way around the cable and remove this uh, outer insulation. Uh, when you cut into it, you should see the braiding underneath. Uh, it's important to um, be careful with the braiding uh, and not to cut into that at the same time. So I'm just going to work around the cable uh, until that can be pulled off. I think we're there now. So inside the cable we have the copper braiding, uh, we just want to pull that back uh, along the insulation and underneath the braiding we have the foil and that just wants to come off, we can get rid of that. What we're left with inside the cable now is the dielectric, the foam centre of the cable. So the same procedure with the knife is just to trim that off. We want to leave about 5 millimetres on there according to the instructions. So again just with the knife uh, just gently going to go in and then that should twist off. There we go. So what we're left with now is the, um, the copper centre, the conductor of the cable in the middle. There's actually too much there. We need about 5 millimetres of the foam dielectric and then we need about 10 millimetres, a centimetre of the copper centre. So I'm just going to trim that down a bit. Like that and just tidy this braiding up. So what we need to do now is go back to the aerial itself and uh, loosen those connections so that we can uh, put our cable onto there. Coming back to the aerial we've got our cable ready and we've got our terminal in the centre here and the clamp as well. So we're going to feed the cable through and uh, do these screws up. The cable will then come along the boom here to where the pole is going to be and then it will come down the pole uh, off to the radio. Uh, do have a look at the instructions, see what they recommend for your aerial. You might not have exactly the same layout as this and if you have the F-type uh, of connector on your aerial we will be taking a look at that uh, before the end of the video as well. Do be careful with uh, any circuitry in here, this printed circuit board thing uh, with the screwdriver when you're doing that up. Be careful not to slice across that and damage it. And if there's any other in instructions that come with your aerial do just follow those and pay attention uh, for this bit. So I've loosened off these screws already, there's just uh, three uh, flathead screws uh, and we're just going to feed the cable through underneath the clamp so the copper conductor goes into the centre terminal and the uh, insulation with the braiding on the outside goes to the uh, underneath this clamp. Be careful that the braiding and the uh, centre copper core don't touch, we want those nice and separate. So that looks quite nice. I'm going to grab the screwdriver and just do that up. As I say, just being careful. And we want a, a good um, connection, but we don't want to crush the cable. Um, we just want to make sure it's nice and tight. It's not going to uh, go anywhere or get loose once the aerial is up. Um, but as I say, we don't want to completely squash it down. What 
we can do now is just um, yeah, that's fine. Bring the the weather cover across. Uh, this can be quite stiff and, and quite difficult to get into place. Uh, we just want to carefully uh, pop that over the uh, connection, and that should just clip on like that. Just check that. So there we go. That's the aerial all ready to go up to the loft now. That's the bit we'll do next. This is the pole that I'm going to use in the loft. I've gone ahead and fitted this because there isn't quite enough space to film that process. Um, but it's an L-shaped uh, mast. It is a loft kit, so it is best suited for an attic rather than going outside. What I'm going to do is pop the aerial over the top of the pole. If you're working on a pole outside, uh, maybe you can undo the bracket and then you can slide onto the pole. But here there's enough space just to pop over the top here. Like that. So on the back we can see the two bolts, they just want doing up. Now I can use the adjustable spanner just to uh, tighten up these nuts. Now that the aerial is up on the pole, we can take the cable and run that off to where it needs to go for the radio. I'm just going to follow down this wall here and then go along and down into a, a cupboard downstairs where you route your cable obviously depends uh, on your particular situation. So now the cable is ready downstairs for us to fit the F plug so we can connect up the hi-fi to the aerial. It's a similar procedure to last time using the standing knife. Just going to take off a bit of the outer insulation. Again, being careful not to damage the braiding underneath. You can get a special uh, tool to uh, take off the insulation if you like, but if you only do it occasionally, I think a standing knife is normally sufficient. So we'll just take off. That should be it. Again, we've got the copper braiding there, so we just want to bring that back along the uh, insulation. And again, the copper tape, we can just take that off. So as before, we have the um, foam dielectric. We just want to trim off uh, most of that again. Uh, this is all similar to what we did upstairs. There we go. So the inside of the F-plug is threaded. So that means we can uh, just twist it on. Uh, the center goes straight through the cable like that. It can be quite difficult to get the, uh, the plug started and for it to go on, um, but it, it does give us a good tight connection, uh, which is what we want. We want the uh, plug to be reliable. We don't want the cable to fall out. So what you would do is just keep twisting that on and have a look in the center, and you should see the foam dielectric coming up to meet the middle of the plug. So just keep turning the uh, F plug onto the cable until you see that. There we go. So you may be left with some excess braiding like this. Uh, what I like to do is just pull it together and, uh, and then bring the cable cutters in here and just cut off the excess. What you'll also notice is that we have um, uh, too much of the, the copper core here. That's far too long to go into the hi-fi. So when we're cutting that off, instead of coming in uh, flush like that, we actually want to come in at an angle and that'll just make it easier to insert the plug into the hi-fi. And there we go. We'll tidy that braiding up, but then that'll be the uh, plug ready to go onto the hi-fi. On the back of the hi-fi, I can undo the wire aerial that comes with it. This is just done by untwisting the F-plug. And now we've got the new aerial lead here, and that just goes on. I can do up the new F-plug. The hi-fi was switched off at the wall to do this, so I'll switch it back on, and then we'll scan for digital stations.
After scanning for DAB stations, the Hi-Fi hasn't found any extra ones, but all of the stations are now received with good signal strength and don't break up. The Hi-Fi also looks better without the long antenna wire behind it. If the reception doesn't seem as good as you expected, you can try changing the position of the aerial and double check the connections. Once everything is okay, you can use cable ties or insulation tape to secure the cable out of the way and prevent it being damaged later. If your aerial has the F connector on it, you'll need to put an F plug on the end of your cable and then just do it up that way. When you get these aerials with the F connector, they normally come with a rubber boot that you can put onto the cable first so that you can uh, seal up the connection uh, once the aerial is out in the weather. Um, what I like to do though is use self amalgamating tape. Uh, it just comes on a roll a bit like insulation tape, um, but the, the difference is when you uh, undo it from the roll, it doesn't feel very sticky. The way the tape works is that when it's stretched to twice its length, it actually seals back on itself and makes a good watertight uh, connection, uh, seal rather. So what we're going to do is just hold it on the bottom of the plug there and start to stretch it out and just come round back on itself. And the thing to do is to go in the direction that the plug does up, otherwise the uh, tape will just pull the plug undone. So just keep coming all the way round uh, until the, the tape is stretched out. Just check that's okay, that's not gonna come loose. And then you end up with a nice watertight connection and uh, that aerial's ready to go outside. The total cost of this installation is about £40, including postage. If you shop around or buy a complete kit, you could save some money, but it is well worth using good quality components. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos about DAB aerials when they're uploaded, please click or tap the subscribe button.